Hey guys, how's it going? Let's jump into a game of chess and see what we get into. Every game is different, as you know. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Hmm. Ooh. There we go. All right. After a moment's thought, my opponent makes the first move. And we are getting the classic setup, guys. E4, E5, knights out, lights out. To Rui Lopez. Okay, guys, you know what's really cool? I just looked up the Rui Lopez a little bit. And it's not from, like, some famous world champion or anything like that. I guess most of these openings aren't. It's from a Spanish priest named Rui Lopez. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I, th I think that's pretty cool. Because, you know... Well, I guess actually it was really common back in, you know, like the 1800s or whatever that chess, that the best chess players were not professional chess players. I don't know if there was such thing as a professional chess player. Seems like everyone had a job, right? Like Paul Morphy was a lawyer, I believe. And then he just also played chess. It's only today, or like not today, but like relatively recently, when chess became lucrative enough that you could make a living at it. And still, it's only like the very top players, of course. And now the streamers, they make the best living. Um, <laughs> saying that, I realize I'm a chess streamer. But no, I'm never going to make a living at it. <laughs> that would be really funny. All right, let's see. This is an interesting move. This is an interesting move. Usually, when I play the Rui Lopez, my opponent takes the knight. So I'm trying to think, what do I need to do here? If they don't take the knight, I kind of want to just get my bishop out and castle. See, if I go here, I've also got this nice little fork. Fork of knight and bishop. I wonder if that's any good. Huh. Oh my gosh. All right, let's think about this, guys. Do, do I know this? Like, am I just not remembering, but I've seen this before and I can think of the correct move? So options here. Play a6. Ask the bishop what he's really up to. Because he can't retreat all the way. So he would probably take the knight. Let's see. Bishop out to like here is walking into this. But wait, no, I would have three defenders on that square, so he couldn't actually do that. Oh my gosh, I'm, I have no idea what to do here, guys, I'll be honest. Let's see, if I push this pawn now, takes, 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 I have, oh yeah, I, I would definitely lose that pawn. Um, let's see, bishop out to here. Oh my gosh, have I not seen this before, this d3 move? Surely I have. Surely I have, but I, I cannot remember at all. All right, so if I jump my knight here, that's interesting. He takes, I take. Um... I have, I don't know, guys. I'm just going to bring my bishop out. I, I really tried to remember because this seems like it's familiar. I wonder if I should have just put my bishop here to defend this pawn. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what the heck? Why is this so strange to me? I Surely I've seen this before. That looks like a really common move or a really common sense move, rather. You know what I mean? Just a simple d3. Let, let me think here. If I go back here, what do I normally see? When I bring this knight out, usually the opponent takes my knight. Yeah, and see guys, I was just saying, I, I looked up some info about the Rui Lopez. There are a lot of variations, I think, from, from the brief investigation I did. Like, people play all kinds of different things, and white generally has an advantage it's a really good opening for white i should probably learn it to be honest guys i should probably be playing this instead of the london 
Now my opponent has fallen for a little trap here. We did a slightly different move order, but this is a battery which leads to checkmate, and we're also attacking the knight. So I still don't know. That I feel like there should be a better term for this. I think it's just under the general heading of a double attack because this is one attack and this is the other attack. But it still feels like there should be a better name because it's almost a fork, except it's not really just a fork. It's a piece and checkmate. There should be a, there should be a name for that. So, yeah, guys, the Rui Lopez is a beast of an opening. Like, if you want to learn it, you have to study a lot. All right, so I'm going to go here. Now he's going to fork. And this is a weird move. But I go like this. And then I'm threatening the rook. This is, this is a weird one, guys. He has to move the rook here. It's the only move, I think. Um, or not. Okay. Huh. Huh. Let's see, jump my knight in with a check. If I jump my knight in with a check, wow, what a good move by my opponent. I, let's see, queen back to here, check. He's going to drop back. I trade queens, and yeah, I'm up a pawn. Let's see, if I castle right now, castle and then i'm obviously threatening rook to d8 that's a that's a brutal one huh interesting uh queen back to here the, i don't think that's good castles he attacks my queen i i go here with check king moves i win his queen he takes my queen. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, I don't know the move here. Let's look at knight jumps in here with a check. Knight jumps in with check. King just drops back to here. And my attack is basically over. So I think I'm just going to castle, guys. Or wait, 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 wait. Bishop to here hitting the queen. Queen can't go here or here. Um, bishop to here, hitting the queen. Let's say the queen moves. Like, to here. Then I bring my... Then I bring my knight in with a check. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. King can't go here. Let's say the king goes back here. Ooh, this is... I feel like the safe move is just castles. Right? Bishop to here, what is he going to do? He is going to go here or here or here. Then I drop my queen back. Now, okay, I drop my queen back. Let's say his queen is here, my bishop is here. Um, he can't go to this square. Let's say he goes this way. So his king is there, my queen is here, my bishop is here, his queen is here. I, this is getting a lot to keep track of.
what would I have then? Well, my bishop is not hanging. It's guarded by my knight. Yeah, I'm just going to castle on out of there, guys. I don't know what to do here. This is this is a little nuts. Oh, no. Okay, so now I'm going to attack and possibly win the queen. That was a That was a blunder, I think. Let's see what happens, but I'm like 99% sure that was a blunder. Mm. My opponent should have thought for more than three seconds there. Yeah, that was that was rough. Ooh. Okay, let's check this out. Yeah, so I missed something. You can see there's an inaccuracy there. It went back to minus four. All right, let's go through this. Let's go through this, guys. All right, d3 is a book move, and white still has an advantage here. So what are you supposed to do here? Let's look at analysis real quick. Bishop c5! Guys, I played the move. Okay, so I just need to remember that, I guess. Um, this is bizarre. I wonder if I'm just having... You know, what do you call it? I just can't remember it. Because I've had to have seen this before. This looks so common sense. And so does this, really. I don't know why I struggled so much. Alright, um, let's keep going. Opponent takes, I take. This is normal. That's a blunder. See, usually, guys... Let me show you what usually happens real quick. So right here, usually my opponent takes, I take, then they do this, and I bring my bishop out, and this is the poison pawn trap. If they take, see, it's the exact same position that we got, but with a different move order. So that's what I'm used to. At my level, most people who play the Rui Lopez, they just take your knight. Like, that's the whole point of it is i don't know why because that's not the main line of the Rui. so i don't know i mean i don't play the Rui, so i don't know i don't know their justification oh gosh how far back do i have to go okay here we go yeah that was a blunder okay i found the right move i found the right move now this let me show you what usually happens here all right um here that was a good move, actually. Okay, but usually they save their rook. And you bring your bishop out to here, right? Setting up another battery, threatening checkmate. As you can see, it's minus seven here, even though you're only up a pawn. Now, I, I'll i be honest, guys. I do not understand why it's minus seven. But, okay, so white has to add a defender to this rook. Usually they do that with knight to d2 right? Adding a defender. And here, from what I recall, you just kind of cash it in. You're like, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, we're pinning the knight. Okay, so the best move here... Wait. The engine just changed his mind. Best move is queen to g6. What? I don't remember seeing that one. What I remember is... Um, at some point, you give up the attack, and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to win another pawn... And apparently this is not the time. Yeah, so maybe you have to castle first or something. So castle, pinning the knight. And then what? Then let's say... Okay, so now, see, the knight is no longer really defending the rook. I'm not sure if that's true, because you would still be... Like, if we take the rook... Captures, captures, captures... Doesn't Isn't that trading? It might be we need the exchange, right? Because we get a rook... And they... they Yeah, is that winning a rook? Let's see. I'm just going to make a dummy move for white. And now, if we were to take... 
knight takes, rook takes, rook takes. So it's actually just a trade. And now we pin their bishop. Hmm. So we don't win anything. All right. So yeah, this is a, like I said, guys, this is a tricky line. And I don't understand why it's minus, now it's minus 11. Okay, yeah, let's take that move back. So I don't understand why it's minus 7 here. It's very sharp, as you can see. So let's see. Queen comes out to protect. And we take, oh, here's how we win the exchange. All right, now we're going to grab that rook. Yep. There it is. Grab the rook. So we win an exchange. That's so weird, because the first time I studied this, it involved giving up the attack, and then we just grab this pawn, and I think we grab another pawn somehow, and then we're done. And it's minus 10 or something, but I don't know why. All right, let's see, because, okay, maybe the, maybe the issue is the knight. So maybe what I looked at before was to defend this rook, the queen comes over here. So then we castle. Why did we castle? Just <laughs> good habit, I guess? I don't know. Here we are threatening to win a rook, right? We take, take, take. So we, we win an exchange here. Let's see. Queen takes e2 if they push the pawn. All right, so knight comes over. And we bring our knight in. Okay. I kind of like this rook move better, even though it's not the very top. That makes a lot more sense to me. Whoops. So let's look at that real quick. Rook comes in, pinning this bishop. Black just castles on out of there. And we play bishop to g4. So here again, we're just going to win an exchange. Queen steps out of the way. And we pick up a rook. So guys, that's why I'm saying I don't totally understand this. Because in the end, we win an exchange. And yet it's minus 8. White is castled. Right? White is castled. Pieces are out. Oh, this, well, okay. This one's pretty nasty because look at this. Yeah, okay. I, I, I blundered here. The, the rook should take. Because did you see that, guys? If the king takes, we can just grab this. And if white recaptures, that's mate. So essentially, we're just winning that bishop. That's really cool. So, yeah, if white sees that, they go like this and avert the whole thing. And maybe here's where we're going to start just cleaning up some pawns. Knight d5. What is this move? Or, sorry. We're just attacking the bishop? Queen f1. Really wants to get rid of our queen. We grab... He grabs. We, aha, see, there it is. We finally just pick up the extra pawn. We're like, yes, we've got several pawns. But yeah, we did win an exchange and several pawns. I, yeah, I don't, it doesn't feel like minus eight. I mean, white is... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess these past pawns are also... Look at this. We've got these guys ready to march. We're about to win another pawn. I kind of get it, but it's such a long line that it's really unbelievable that all the way back here, all the way back here, the computer already knows all that stuff is going to happen, right? It's bizarre. But anyway, guys, remember this line, because this comes up in the Rui Lopez a lot. As you can see, there are several different move orders. 
So it can be very tricky to to remember what to do. But that's why we play bishop c5. And it's why we let that pawn hang. Right? Because it's not actually hanging. If white takes it, they get into a world of hurt. And it's just really bizarre that even though you only win a pawn at first, it's just so crushing. Because, yeah, white played a very good move here. I don't know if he saw this or what, but you do walk right into a fork. How long did he think about that? Um, oh, shoot. Okay, to see the time, we have to go back to this screen. Hold on. I'm really curious. So right here, I thought for like three minutes, right? Before playing bishop c5. That's crazy. I just did not remember, which is bizarre. But yeah, it's just a different move order. Here he took pretty quickly, 48 seconds. I guess he was trying to think if there's a trap, but there's not yet. We recapture, and now that was only 11 seconds. Okay, fair enough. Here he thought for 55 seconds. So that might be long enough to think that he's thinking he's going to pick up my bishop, right? So it's a trade. But what he didn't realize at first, maybe was that when you take this knight, you're also defending the bishop. It's really cool. But then look at that, three seconds. So he did see this. Or sorry, two seconds. He immediately saw the fork. He had to have seen that. And maybe he wasn't expecting that. But now material is equal, and I pick up a pawn. But yeah, the position is minus seven. Wow, he played that really fast. He played that really fast. Well, it just shows you what a tricky line it is because if you do calculate that, which props to my opponent, he thought for 55 seconds and found all those moves essentially, including the fork that almost restores material. That is unbelievable. That's really impressive. I wouldn't find that in a million years. <laughs> I'd be like, uh-oh, I guess I lose the night. And the funny thing is that's the best move. If you come back here to the eval, when this trap happens, if you look at the engine line, the best move, here, we'll let it think for a second. Let it think for a second. Just to show you I'm not making this up. Because you saw, white can essentially restore material, right? They're just down one pawn with the moves my opponent played. But the best engine line here, queen e2, just pretend, just just ignore that your knight is hanging, and then you lose the knight. That's the best engine line in this position. That's why I'm saying I don't really understand the line, because, yeah, you're up a pawn, but it's like another 10 or 15 moves before you get a real advantage and you get that exchange. You win an exchange for your bishop and the rook or something, right? And then you pick up an extra pawn, and then you've got two passed pawns, like... I get it conceptually. It's just amazing to me because I can't see it from here at all. Like, it's just not possible to see that far, I think. But that takes me back to that John von Neumann quote about mathematics, where he said, young man, one does not understand things in mathematics. One simply gets used to them. <laughs> and that is definitely true here. Like, I don't understand this at all, but I'm used to this trap. And I know, I, I know what to do. And today I was kind of slow in recognizing it because of the move order, but whatever. All right, guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time. Bye.